What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Join us now as we look at the most controversial episode of AEW Dynamite, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including why AEW just ended itself, why this was not a good idea, Will Ospreay takes a shot at Triple H, AEW looks to have regret ever doing this, WWE's reaction backstage, a WWE star still not signed, WWE scaling back sets, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. As always, we won't recap the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and oh boy, the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one, Swerve Strickland and Joe Heat. AEW is doing many things wrong, but not for its build-up for Swerve Strickland vs Samoa Joe. Last night's brawl between Swerve and AEW World Champion turned up the heat in their already sizzling program, adding anticipation for their clash at Dynasty. Number 2, Jericho Hook's storyline takes a twist. While Jim Ross wasn't around to say it, it looks like business is about to pick up on the ongoing storyline between Hook and Jericho. Jerry Hook may crash on takeoff if things continue like they did this week when a mistake cost Jericho Hook and Shibata after Shibata missed his opponent and leveled the Ocho. Judging from the match's finish, Hook may opt to team with Shibata instead of Jericho and this could even turn out to be a ploy by one or both wrestlers to embarrass Jericho. Number 3, Julia Hart, a beacon of hope. Julia Hart is a rare beam of light in AEW's otherwise bleak women's division. Hart's promos and ring work are entertaining and she's must-see television, a rarity in both women's division and AEW itself. Although Julia Hart is too young to be leading AEW's women's division, she continues to show that it's only a matter of time before she does, and an exciting ride. Pentel Zero vs Adam Copeland was an exciting ride that, dare we say, had AEW fans on the edge of their seats. While Penta is best known for his tag team work, AEW has established him as a viable singles competitor, so this was a match where Penta was presented as a threat, even if fans knew AEW was unlikely to take the title off Copeland so soon. Well, that was a good, what about the bad? As number one, the whisper bit has to go. What did Trent Barretta whisper to Chris Statlander backstage? Well, who cares? Once again, professional wrestling has found a way to take a clever idea, creating suspense by showing a wrestler whispering into another wrestler's ear, and run it into the ground by using it over and over again. Number 2, AEW's Brody King Conundrum. A Brody King is apparently ready to take Adam Copeland's TNT Championship. The problem is that while King has all the goods to be a top star, size, look, and in-ring ability, his continued portrayal as one of AEW's many big men jobbers makes it impossible to take him as a threat to Copeland. Number 3, another worthless show. Last night's show was an example of how AEW can take advantage of a hook. Here, AEW likely hoped it could attract lapsed fans and new fans with the promise of the CM Punk footage and get them in to check out the AEW product. Unfortunately, the majority of last night's show was as disappointing as the punk footage turned out to be. Last night's show was another forgettable edition of Dynamite, and even worse, AEW is so desperate to have you wonder if they booked Dustin Rhodes vs Samoa Joe to capitalize on Cody's recent big win at WrestleMania. Well, that was the good and the bad. What about the downright ugly? It backfired. Badly. AEW did it. The promotion which has been in a downward spiral for the last 18 months finally achieved its version of the finger poke of doom by airing the footage of CM Punk's backstage altercation with Jack Perry at last summer's All In pay-per-view. Airing the footage seemed like a bad idea, but AEW found a way to make it even worse by trying it to turn it into an angle to build up the Bucks vs FTR match at Dynasty. Having the Young Bucks insinuate FTR was behind the Punk Perry incident as a ploy to gain an edge over them at All In was absolutely asinine. Actually, this move was worse than the Finger Poker Doom and seems more like a combination of that and the dreadful decisions that led to David Arquette and Vince Russo becoming WCW champion. After this, it's clear that WWE is in a new era, while AEW is in the WCW era. What did you guys think of AEW Dynamite last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Our first story looks at AEW just ended itself. At top of today's news is the fallout from Tony Khan's decision to air the backstage footage from the dust-up between Punk and Jack Perry at last summer's All In pay-per-view. In case you missed it, the footage, which has no sound, shows Punk confronting Jack Perry. Punk shoves Perry twice and then takes him down briefly before Punk is separated. No footage was shown to verify or debunk AEW's president Tony Khan's claim that he felt his life was in danger. Dave Meltzer is reporting on some of the fallout from AEW airing the footage, saying, I asked around that the basic thing was like, look, it's over and done with this bad chapter in the history of AEW, and it's over, and no point when he can say whatever he wants, who cares? 
there was a couple of people who were going like, Adam Page never got to answer back and won't and will never answer back because he doesn't want to be whatever. But most people just like, we're over it. It's not part of our lives. It's not part of our company. Forget about it. They discussed what they heard from people in AEW. Now here, as soon as Tony Khan did that, then I started to hear from people. And it was like people who were just really frustrated going like, now it's back. You know, the whole thing is back. And there's this thing that have happened. People have been made to look bad now and they can't answer back. And because you don't want to, you know, it opened up a wound that needed to be closed. They need to move past this. This doesn't do AEW any good. And I mean, if I'm punk, I'm laughing about it. Honestly, I'm laughing about it. It's likely this will only give more ammunition for the WWE and Punk to level AEW in the media. The WWE blasted AEW in the press during WrestleMania week and may be thinking how to spin this to its advantage. Punk even took to Instagram to post this right after AEW Dynamite. He definitely is just laughing about this. Next up, Tony Schiavone's reaction. How did Tony Schiavone feel about AEW airing the Punk footage? Or well, footage has surfaced showing Tony sitting at the announce desk and he doesn't look thrilled when AEW cut to the footage segment. He's definitely having some PTSD from those WCW days. In fact, he did this same reaction at Bash at the Beach 2000. So you definitely know what he was thinking about this segment. Next up, WWE's reaction backstage to the CM Punk footage. Now there has been a recent update on what the WWE actually thought about the promo. This is thanks to Fightful Select who reported that within WWE there were plenty of people talking about the situation, but most we spoke to were exhausted after the insane WrestleMania week. We heard no particularly surprised reactions or anything that happened that anyone didn't expect. CM Punk is not getting punished, scolded or anything of like within the company. There were a few wrestlers who considered the video of a cell phone and others who said that they simply didn't care and watching out of curiosity. They also mentioned that a wrestler who has been both in WWE and AEW said that there was no worse than anything that happened during the Monday Night War era. Next up, no, this was not a good idea. If you consider social media as a valid measurement of public opinion, it appears that many fans feel that it was a mistake to run this footage. Even fans claiming to be AEW diehards seem to be confused as to what the purpose was to air the footage. Many of these comments discuss how the footage did nothing to dispute Punk's account of things and while it seems to show Punk being the aggressor, Punk never denied this. In fact, even the live reaction from the crowd in AEW had CM Punk chants after it. That's when you know that things couldn't be as bad as they could possibly be. The day melts away on this decision to run the video. I don't think it was a good idea. I never did think it was a good idea, but I thought, look, you gotta give them the benefit of the doubt. See what happens. Meltzer pointed out how airing the footage quickly bit AEW in its backside. Here's the thing, later in the show when fans were chanting CM Punk, it was like, well, this one sure backfired. You don't want people chanting the name of someone from another promotion during your show. And sometimes it's gonna happen and you just can't avoid it. But this was one you brought on yourselves. Next up, Dark Days Ahead. Now, 2024 was supposed to be the year that AEW turned things around and while AEW dug a huge hole for themselves thanks to its bad booking, the company's recent slew of signings of top free agents like Will Ospreay, Okada and Mercedes Monet suggested some hope. However, this footage flop just erased any goodwill AEW had with its fans and its locker room. AEW has dug a hole for itself and may not be able to escape from. Considering just how badly this has already turned out, one has to wonder if anything can be done to save AEW. And at one point, Shahid Khan takes the keys away from Tony Khan. Next up, Will Ospreay takes a shot at Triple H. Ironically, AEW's airing of the all-in footage occurred the same night as Will Ospreay showed how to roast the competition with a promo. Ospreay took time during his interview with Renee Packett to respond to Triple H's recent remarks that WWE doesn't want to hire wrestlers who aren't willing to endure the WWE grind. Helmsley didn't name names, but fans took his comments as a shot against wrestlers who claimed they had signed with AEW due to the lighter schedule. Osprey told Renee, there's this rumor that I'm afraid of the grind and I'll be honest, I have no idea where this conversation has come from because I'm one of the only guys that are traveling every single week to the UK and America, eight 10 hour flights every single week and I'm delivering one of the best professional wrestling matches this world has ever seen, brav. But he wasn't through though and unloaded with some haymakers. And normally I wouldn't rise to this type of bait, but seeing as the guy that said it is only in the position he's in because he was grinding on the boss's daughter, you're in no position to tell me what the grind is all about, my friend, because you have no idea what I fight for. So let this be a painful jab back and a gentle reminder that you do not throw stones and an assassin with a machine gun. While fans differ on whether promotions should take TV or pay-per-view time to criticize the competition, Osprey's interview is an example of how to blast a rival in a way that exposes their weaknesses and plays to your strengths. That's something the CM Punk footage did neither of. Next up, were the Young Bucks and Will Ospreay opposed to the promos though? 
A new report suggests that the Bucks and Will Ospreay didn't come up with the idea for the respective promos against Punk and WWE, or rather Triple H. PW Torch's Wade Keller is reporting, regarding the Bucks, I've been checking with people in AEW and I've been told that this was not something that the Bucks were in favour of doing. It wasn't their idea, it was Tony Khan's idea that he wanted this out there. As for Osprey, Keller commented, I'm also told that this was an idea presented to Osprey. I don't know about Osprey's enthusiasm for it or against it, but it wasn't something he did on his own. He didn't wing it, it was something that hours before the interview took place was proposed to him. That's what I'm hearing from AEW. While Keller's story hasn't been confirmed, it's not a good sign for AEW if it turns out to be true. Next up, AEW looks to have regret this decision. Now it seems that AEW is making copyright infringement claims against anyone who airs the footage, including the MMA Hours, Ariel Helwani who tweeted, not very nice. Some lawyer out of Jacksonville got my account locked momentarily and DMCA'd the video I posted which contained CCTV and interview footage from my show, just felt like the CCTV needed some narration, you know? Anyway, here's Punk's seemingly very accurate PBP. Not only that, but they even cut the video out in their own video on YouTube, a video that has more dislikes than likes. Next up, a WWE star still not signed. Has Drew McIntyre signed a new deal with WWE? Well, not according to Fightful Select, which reports there are plans for McIntyre in the company and they plan on retaining him. It's believed that McIntyre is confident he can succeed wherever he works, but even though his contract is ending soon, they don't seem to think that McIntyre will leave. And finally, WWE scaling back sets. Last but not least, is the WWE changing up its sets for live events like Raw and SmackDown? That's a report coming from PWInsider.com saying, The SmackDown and Raw setup seen over WrestleMania weekend will be the norm going forward as a way to roll back certain aspects of production in favour of packing more fans into the arenas. Even MSG will feature the smaller production setup for the 28th June SmackDown taping. There may be exceptions to this, but this will be one of the changes as part of the Endeavour era. The WWE has been selling out many of its recent Raw and SmackDown shows, so it's no surprise that Endeavour will want to maximise ticket sales, even if it means adjusting the show sets. Well, there you have it, folks. I will look at Dynamite this week, as well as the wildest news stories and rumours you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.